What are some of the biggest questions at starting pitcher? Find out next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Saturday, November 16th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Chris Towers. And today we're looking at some starting pitcher questions. Chris released a great newsletter, FBT newsletter, so make sure to subscribe if you want to uh, read more. But we will start with Paul Skeens. Chris, how early is too early to draft Paul Skeens? Well, I suppose that depends on who you ask. I think there is going to be someone in every single draft who thinks he's worth a first round pick. It won't be me, but I have seen in some of these early drafts, I'm doing one. He went seventh. I think you said you were in one where he went fourth. Yeah. Uh, he's gone top five, a few other times there, there aren't many drafts happening right now, but we are seeing first round Paul schemes. And personally, I can't justify that. Like, if you think Paul schemes is the best pitcher in baseball, I think that's a reasonable statement to make. Being that much more certain about him being the best pitcher in baseball than anyone else that you take him 8, 10, 12 spots ahead of any other starting pitcher, I just can't justify that, right? Like you look at all the underlying stats, uniformly suggest Paul Skeens was one of the three to five best pitchers in baseball, but like that was over 130 innings at the major league level. If you think he was maybe a little better than Tarek Skubal last season, which ERA definitely was underlying numbers was all a little closer, basically a tie. But even if you think he was better, Scooble threw 190 innings last season. Skeens threw 130. So just by that alone, you should be more confident in what Scooble did mo projecting moving forward than what Skeens did. That's not even getting into the fact that Skeens career high in innings, 160.1. We just haven't seen him get to that 180, 190 inning mark. Now, he might be so good that even if he throws 150 innings, he's a top five starting pitcher. He was top 10 in 130 innings last season. But I just, I am not so convinced that he's better than Tarek Skubal or Garrett Crochet or Zach Wheeler that I can overlook the, the likely innings gap and just the uncertainty that's inherent. I think he's awesome. I think he can be the number one starting pitcher in fantasy. I think you... You should draft him in the second round if you really like him. If he's not there, just take Tarek Skubal. The Mariners had a good season, Chris. It could have been a great season if they had more offense. So we're projecting, hoping that maybe they move some of their pitchers or one of their pitchers to get some more bats in their lineup. Which Mariners starter do you think is most likely to get traded? If it were... If they had their choice, I think it would be Luis Castillo. However, I believe Luis Castillo has a no-trade clause. He makes the most money by far of that group, so he's probably just less likely to fetch that impact bat that they're looking for. So if you were looking to move one of them, I think Logan Gilbert or Bryce Miller probably makes the most sense. They're the closest to being a sell high, and I think it's probably more true of Bryce Miller. And, and here's why this question matters, because it's not just... They're going to get traded and they'll be on a different team. The extent to which the Mariners pitchers benefit from pitching at, uh, it's not Safeco, T-Mobile. It's one of those things where like everything I learned about baseball when I was 18 just stuck. Every name for every ballpark. So it's just Safeco forever for me. T-Mobile Park. <laughs> Logan Gilbert had a 290, 249 ERA, 29.8% strikeout rate at home last year. He had a 394 ERA and a 25% strikeout rate on the road. And if you think that sounds extreme, Bryce Miller had a 196 ERA at home with a 30% strikeout rate. He was basically the best pitcher in baseball at home. On the road, Bryce Miller had a 425 ERA and a 17.8% strikeout rate. Wow. He was basically like Kyle Hendricks on the road. That's probably an exaggeration, but the gap we're talking about here is huge. And that's really scary because we, we, you know, we talk a lot about how T-Mobile park is a tough place for hitters. They don't see the ball. Well, the Mariners have really leaned into that with their pitch design, I think, and their pitch development. And it's made it so that they've got a great rotation that might be extra dependent on that home park. 
And I could see Bryce Miller going from being, you know, a, a borderline stud to really more like a mid rotation arm. So that's my concern. If he gets traded, if I was the Mariners, that's probably the guy I'd be looking to trade. One of the big name free agents this offseason is Corbin Burns. And we've seen over the past couple of years, swinging strike rate, strikeout rate, steadily declining. Now that did pick up late in the season. He said he figured something out with his cutter grip. What do you think? Can Corbin Burns still be a legit ace for fantasy? Absolutely think he can be. One thing for him is just in terms of projecting innings moving forward, I don't know if there's anybody besides maybe Zach Wheeler that you should be more comfortable projecting volume from than Corbin Burns. He's thrown over 3,000 pitches three years in a row. He's become one of the true workhorses in baseball. The problem is he's become more of a volume guy over the past couple of years. 2021, he was a 35.6% strikeout rate pitcher. 2024, it was just 23.1%. That's basically average, maybe a little bit better. And the primary problem has been the cutter. Like you mentioned, he dropped from like a 30% whiff rate with that cutter to 19% last year, which was good for just 34th among 44 pitchers who threw their cutters at least 100 or ended their ended 100 plate appearances with their cutter last season. That's a below average mark. But in September, like you mentioned, he got the feel back for it, got that whiff rate back up to 26% over the final month, had a good postseason start as well, looked more like the pre-2024 version. I think he's a top five pitcher for 2025. We'll see where he signs. That might push him up or down a spot. But on the whole, I do think Corbin Burns can still be an ace. All right, last one we're going to hit on here. Garrett Cole. We know that he missed a lot of time last year with an elbow injury, had some blow-up starts, most notably against the Mets and the Red Sox, uh, and then looked pretty good in the postseason. What do you think? Are you betting on a Garrett Cole bounce back for 2025? Uh, that postseason is a little bit of a mirage, though, isn't it, Frank? I know you're a Yankees fan, so you're probably aware. He had a 217 ERA in the postseason. That doesn't count the five runs he gave up in that World Series start, which, yes, they were unearned, but at least some of them were his fault. And he just, overall, he had 22 strikeouts over 29 innings while walking 10 batters. Just a 17.7% strike rate would be by far the worst of his career. The 8% walk rate would be would match the worst rate of his career. And we just didn't see the slider for him last season. That was the big thing. Maybe it was just because he was coming back from that nerve issue in his elbow in spring training, but the slider just never looked right. It went from his second most used pitch to his fourth most used pitch. The cutter and knuckle curve weren't quite as effective. And he's 34. And how much do you want to bet on a 34-year-old bouncing back at this point in their career? I think it's possible, but I'm viewing Garrett Cole more as a number two starting pitcher We've seen skills decline a couple years in a row from him. Strikeout rate, not nearly what it once was. So I think he's a solid number two. You're probably going to be behind the eight ball if he's your uh, ace in 2025. All right, so we got to four questions here. Chris actually answered seven starting pitcher questions in his newsletter. It's also an article on the website, so make sure to check that out if you want to get more, uh, you want to read more questions, see more answers. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in five, and we will be back again next week. Bye bye. 